What's up everyone, John Sauropoulos here, and I'm going to be talking to you about our first component of the Big 3, bat speed. No surprise here really. The first thing we're going to look at is how bat speed is measured. The formal definition reads, bat speed is the speed of the bat in miles per hour measured 6 inches from its end. Essentially, we're measuring how fast the sweet spot is moving when contact occurs. One technical note, when we mention bat speed, we're specifically talking about how fast the bat is moving at contact. While bat speed can be measured at other points during the swing, for the sake of this course, and generally speaking, when we use the term bat speed, we're talking about a hitter's bat speed at contact, where bat speed will always be its fastest, assuming contact is made. The reason bat speed stands atop driveline's big three in order of importance is because of the linear relationship it shares with exit velocity. Let's take a look at a couple of examples to see how increasing your bat speed can increase your exit velocity as well. This is a screenshot from one of Alan Nathan's lectures on batted ball physics. The main takeaway here is that exit velocity is indeed a formula. EV equals Q times the velocity of the pitch plus 1 plus Q times the velocity of the bat. Now let's plug in some numbers to illustrate a couple of examples. Example number one, you're swinging the bat 68 miles per hour and the pitch is crossing home plate at 80 miles per hour. If we assume a perfect collision efficiency of 0.2, the hardest exit velocity you can achieve here is 97.6 miles per hour, which is good, but it's not great. On to example number two. This time you're swinging the bat 75 miles per hour, pitch speed stays the same at 80 miles per hour, and again we're going to assume a perfect collision efficiency of 0.2. The exit velocity of this batted ball will be 106 miles per hour. As we can see, swinging the bat faster has a direct impact on how hard you'll be able to hit the baseball. Our hitters at Driveline use a blast motion sensor to collect bat speed data. These sensors are great because they provide instant feedback after every swing. And we are able to track all of a hitter's swings to monitor progress. Calculating the average bat speed of MLB players is a little bit more difficult. Since hitters aren't wearing blast sensors during the game, we calculate MLB average bat speeds using a proxy that is able to reverse engineer a player's average bat speed from their batted ball data. The 2021 leaderboard is somewhat intuitive and definitely includes some familiar faces. A good rule of thumb for bat speed is that the guys who are hitting the ball the hardest are swinging the bat the fastest. For those curious about our process, we have a couple great blogs that go into detail about our bat speed proxy. But the long and short here is that we identify a subset of batted balls where we know the pitch speed, exit velocity, and collision efficiency. This allows us to use Alan Nathan's formula to reverse engineer an estimated player's average bat speed. This is a screenshot from a Tom Tango blog post. On the y-axis is WOBA, or weighted on base average, and it's a measure of your offensive production. The higher the better. On the x-axis is the exit velocity of a batted ball. Being able to hit the ball harder increases your production on batted balls. The reason for this is that hitting the ball harder improves your chances of hitting the ball over the fence and decreases the defensive chances of making a play. Hitting the ball harder is advantageous for any hitter, and the best way to hit the ball harder is to swing the bat faster. For a different look, here's exit velocity by runs. And to get a little bit more granular, you'll see exit velocity groupings on the leftmost column. The most staggering statistical difference here is the jump scene and home run percentage when balls start being hit over 100 miles per hour. And lastly, even if you're still in the batting average, Hitting the ball harder is good for that too. When it comes down to it, swinging the bat faster will almost always be a positive value add for any baseball player. In other videos, we will touch on the relationship between the big three and how improvements in each, or just one of these metrics, can improve a player's projections and performance. As always, thanks for watching.